buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny episode 63. Today we're going to chat with Mike Pappas from Dead Air Silencers. Gertrude wants Malcolm to get firearms training and talk about the T-Shock targets. Today's panel is Sean Heron. I'm Ava Flannell and my fingers smell like rubber, but we'll get into that later. Well, uh, have you ever heard of winter denial syndrome? Oh, I think I think I know what that means. Does it mean that you show up wearing shorts and like a tank top and it's snowing outside, but you're like, it's not winter. Uh, I'm good. I'm, you know. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And I think I've got it. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> Every day that you've been showing up wearing shorts, I'm like, hey, buddy, got a little got a little news to break it to you. I don't know. I, I, I can't help it. I'm not ready for pants weather. So I don't know. Whatever. Does well, anyone else experience that? I just that's that's the thing I want to know. But before we talk about that, let's talk about manicure arms. How are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. You're going to how are you going to ask a question and then just be like, OK, nobody has an answer. <laughs> Moving on, Because I actually have an answer. Tell me. So the only thing that I look forward to fall is my cute clothes. I have really cute boots and scarves and sweaters. Like I am right. like in love with all the sweaters. Okay, pumpkin spice Barbie. Let's that'll do. <laughs> Manticore Arms is our first advertiser that we're going to talk about. Ava, what did you write down in the show notes? Mm, let's see the triangle stock. Ah, uh, the Chinese triangle stock. Yes, I love it. You actually have it. You have it on your AK. We've got a folding stock adapter and the Chinese so- triangle stock on there. Yeah, so I actually I want to talk about just the triangle stock, not the Chinese stock. Oh, they're two separate things. Yeah, so Chinese stock is I have that one as well, and I actually like it. I didn't realize that you can change out the little panels. Yeah, so you can change the colors and stuff, which is cool, and I like that design. But I really love the triangle stock. It just it gives any AK kind of like that modern look, but you can still, you know, kind of keep that classic. It's like a mix between modern and classic. Yeah, well, I mean, it's definitely is classic. It's kind of modeled after. Uh, the older ones, they are great. Do you still have that web page up? Because I just want to look at it one more time. It's beautiful. Uh, what do those run actually as far as cost? So Triangle Stock is $112.95. But they never pay full full price on the show. Nope. If you use code GUNFUNNY15, that gets you 15% off. All right. Let's get into the show. Learn the things you never knew. On Deconstructing the Industry. So, Mike, I'm assuming that you've been in the firearm industry for quite some time, even though you look, you know, you don't look a day older than maybe 21, but (laughs) (laughs) that's a bad joke. (laughs) But what got you into the firearms industry? Well, you know, that's a kind of a good question. I I've always been into guns, and I was driving home. I was a mechanic at a regular automotive mechanic shop, and an ad came on the radio talking about a gun store that I'd never heard of. So I U-turned and went to it, and uh, that was called Get Some Guns and Ammo in Salt Lake. And I, it was kind of a cool little store just starting out and, I happened by there a little bit, and then after, oh, I don't know, maybe six or eight months, the guy that owned the store asked me if I wanted to work part-time just on Saturdays, and that sounded kind of cool, so I did, and that later I ended up quitting my mechanic shop and managing that store, and that kind of, then from there on, it's been firearms ever since I switched. How did you go from uh, doing retail and managing the retail store and all that good stuff to, uh, you know, being being what you are today? Well, this little gun store that I'm, this location one was really super small. If four people came in, they'd get a little edgy. And if six people walked in, two or three of them would leave. You just couldn't fit in there. <laughs> I got to know Jonathan Schultz in there. And he's one of the founding members of Silencer Co. And we talked, he came in one day and was just like, we should start a silencer company. And I was like, okay. And there Silencer Co. was born and started. And and then, you know, we went through the Silencer Co. thing and then over to Dead Air. Very nice. And then, uh, so Silencer Co., 
what what did you do when you guys first started there? When we very first started there, we made the Silent Circle Sparrow and we had one product. No one knew who we were. No one had ever heard of us. We came up with, well, I guess I'm the one that came up with the idea for the clamshells or half pipes, if you will, that shielded the, it's a monocore design. So when it got really dirty, you could just push it out of the tube. Mm -hmm. And that's what we started the company on. And then from there, the Osprey and, and just kind of got bigger and bigger. It kind of blew up. So when you when you came up with those ideas, did you know much about silencers, suppressors, or I did. I mean, I had you know certainly a great interest in it, and had for years before silencers, and we sold them in the gun store, and I was very familiar with everything that was out and older, like you know Sonics designs and whatnot. Very cool. So you were working at Silencer Co. And then at what point did you leave Silencer Co. and, and start Dead Air? I was not, not 100% clear on that progression. So once Silencer Co. was started, I was one of the founding members and I was a manager of it. And everything went along awesome. We kind of had a little, I don't know what you'd say, difference of opinion. I'm very conservative when it comes to debt. And everybody else wanted to expand, expand, expand. And I ended up resigning as a manager to avoid signing a large loan that we were getting. And that loan did go through. And that actually released me for all the previous loans, which was actually kind of an awesome feeling. I made it about three months after that. And then I got fired. So, <laughs> Dang. That's how I, <laughs> I, was, I didn't quit on my own. But. So you were you were one of the founding members, but you weren't a and part and owner. an owner. Okay, because I was I actually always wondered how how did that work? Because you hear all the time like people that came up with the company and then they get fired from their company. Well, it was pretty crazy. This was just maybe the tail end of October of thirteen, and I went home and I told Mrs. Pappas, I was like, um, I got fired today. And she's like, no, like how, how do you get fired if you are an owner? And I was like, I, I don't really know how that works, but I'm pretty sure it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery to everybody. Except. Yeah. I, I didn't see that coming, but you know, we, like I said, I think we just kind of drifted apart and everybody wanted to go a different direction. And I became mm -hmm. maybe a little, I don't know. I was probably seen as what, how can I say this nicely? Poo pooing on every idea or whatever. Cause I didn't want to do it cause it was stupid. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got seen as kind of a roadblock guy. So I got pushed out of the way. Yeah, that actually brings up a great point, you know, firing you from your own company. Uh, Ava, this is probably the inappropriate time to do so, but you are fired. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So what, you think they're going to put oh. your face, you know, with the bunny ears and that body? Yeah. I better been... go to the gym. <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to be a fat bunny, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang. That, that is crazy. That, that is pretty intense. Are you, but I mean, at the end of the day, like, are you kind of, I'm sure at that time it sucked, but looking back, are you kind of glad that it happened? You know, I mean, it had its ups and downs, and there were just awesome times there where it was just, you just couldn't wait to get up and get back to work, you know? I mean, it had all the good and bad of any kind of a relationship or situation like that. that yeah, it, it, it super sucked at the time, but looking back on it now, I mean, the condition and, you know, overall health of dead air and, then the silent circle situation, I, I couldn't be more thankful. I ended up selling my shares, so, you know, I'm I'm totally done and have been out of there for quite some time. Nice. That was quite a relief, too, to just be done. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Kind of like a bad relationship. Were you involved at all in the design of, like, the Maxim 9? No, that came after me. Came well after. I left about after the Saker. Well, I was there when we bought SWR and took on the SWR product line. 
and manufactured those. And then we blended and kind of dropped the SWR name and branded them all as Silencer Co. And the harvester was just in its infancy of being worked on at that time when I got fired. Gotcha. Interesting. So then from Silencer Co., you know, how long before you started Dead Air Silencers? Well, I got another job, which was super awesome, at a place called the Gun Vault. Okay. A giant retail gun store and range, kind of as a tied over thing. I, as I recall, it was probably somewhere in December. And I'd known Eric Rogers. He's the president of Dead Air. He reached out to me and kind of said, hey, do you want to do another silencer company kind of a thing? And I said, hell, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. So we ended up getting product out in, I think, the hell end of, if not the kind of the first of 15, I believe. So it all that all started. I didn't know really what I was going to do, and you know I was kind of in a little bit of a limbo. And then we started that, so off we went again. Nice. So when when someone starts at a new company, like when you went to Dead Air, uh, not sure 100 percent what you were going to do. Did you want to come in swinging, and what what kind of products were you responsible for when you started there? Well, we decided to come out first with a make just the toughest most aggressive, best materials, best mount that we could make, 30 caliber rifle can. It's a little tougher place to start, but having already had experience, we didn't have to start with rim fire like you see most silencer companies. The same way we do a silencer coat. It's easiest. Mm -hmm. It's the largest segment of the market. It's the easiest to break into. It's the lowest tech. It has, you know, the least amount of pressure and problems and it's really the easiest one to design and a really quality 30 caliber rifle can is a little more advanced so we decided to start there you know our kind of idea was like look we're new it's a new company but we are not new Todd McGee had worked at Silencer Co as well so he was in the he went back to the medical device industry and I called him and was like, dude, we have to do it again. Like you have to work with me again. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's awesome. Todd's our lead engineer. So you mentioned mounting systems and I've got to say, so I have a silencer co Saker 762 and I actually love the can. What I didn't love was, was the mount, the, the trifecta. And I, I got it and I had problems with it and it kept locking on and it was just I constant problems. I had to send it back a couple times. They sent me brand new mounts I had the exact same problems on multiple rifles, and finally I had enough, and uh, someone recommended, I think it was Rick Birdsall, competition shooter, he actually recommended Dead Air to me for, for your mounts, which is the the chemo mount, right? Right, correct. So I was like, well, that's a huge investment, man, like that, so I've got to get this, and then he, he told me that I need to get a bunch of flash hiders and then get the pyro as well. And finally, I just, I was having so many problems with that trifecta that, that I said, Okay, fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a thousand dollars because it was you know two fifty for the pyro, two forty ish for the chemo, and then new flash hiders for all the all the different rifles that I put this can on, both thirty cal and five five six. And I got to say, I've never looked back. It's been one of the best investments I've uh, I've made, honestly, just because it works. It's exactly what I think the trifecta should have been. It just it, it works and it, it fits my suppressor, which is great. It fits all these mounts, and I've not once ever had a problem with it. So. Uh, I just wanted to share that with you. Was that kind of the goal? That's what I love to hear. You know, at it wasn't at first. It was just to focus on our own mounting can, and we didn't want to right off the bat make the mount screw into the can. We, you know, going for just super tough and not having a connection there, and the weight, the added weight of having two threaded connections and all that. Mm -hmm. We always kind of half planned on making the chemo and then offering it to give people another option. You know, with that way that they are new nomad suppressors threaded, it'll take silence or comb out. Q makes them out for it so you can put it on a cherry bomb. You've got 
Yankee Hill and advanced armament mounts, it really opens it up to the customer. So I've, I've always been under the thinking that, look, in essence, a rifle silencer, the thing that makes it obsolete is the mount. And if you can change that, then, I mean, you're a perfect example of that. You were unhappy with your mount. You changed your mount. You're still happy with your can. A fake is a fantastic can. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I do like the can. I'm, I have not used dead air silencers to this point, but I've got to say, like, I mean, pretty much anything you guys come out with, I would trust because I've had such good luck with all the products that I've bought from you guys. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the thing, right? Um, get into everybody a little bit if you can. Yeah, totally. And I thought it was smart, too. All right, Sean, keep it in your pants. All right. We get it. You got a boy crush. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking to Mike Pappas. From Dead Air Silencers, we're going to take a quick break and hear from our friends over at Hackett Equipment. So did you guys know that there are actual pouches that strap uh, your gun into those pouches, which is great because nothing's worse. Like, okay, take a suitcase, for example, when you pack and you pack it all nice and neat and you don't want your clothes to get wrinkly. But then after flying, you open up your suitcase and like things are everywhere. And it's like, well, why did I even bother folding it? Well, TSA has to try stuff on. Yeah, apparently. So... It's kind of like when you put your guns and your ammo and all that in these bags. It's nice because those pouches, like there's Velcro pouches or there's the straps, you know, that you put your guns in. And that ensures that it's not going to move when you're in transition. Yep, totally agree. Nothing worse than having your guns get all scratched up. Absolutely. In the bag. Or putting ammo and stuff in certain places, but then it ends up on the other side of the bag and you can't find it. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are interested in getting your bag, they have two different bags, the EDC and the Big Bertha. Go to HackettEquipment.com, use the code GUNFUNNY, and that gets you 10% off. Absolutely. Go check them out. And we're back with Mike from Dead Air Silencers. Okay, what's the next line of question going to be? The, yeah, The next Sean, line of next? question is, what do you think that actually uh, separates dead air silencers from your competitors? Well, you know, I think that mostly is in the product, and I believe that starts with the people involved and the things that those people want. I think you've got a couple different kind of say, driving forces there. You can see that. I mean, it's not like a secret, but you can see a company, you know, we'll call it company A, manufactures a firearm silencer as a business to sell them. And maybe they're not super passionate and they build a fine product, but they're usually more price point oriented. We are gun guys at the core We love what we do, and we try to manufacture, design, and offer a product that we would like to use. You know, and we've done that with a couple of products, I think, to show the Wolverine, for example. One of my favorite and just a killer product, if you're an AK guy, there's just not a lot of things in that market space for you to even look at to you know, without re-threading and modifying and and tuning your rifle and all that sort of business, you can just get a Wolverine. Like, we love AKs, and we knew that that product wouldn't be a stellar seller in the big picture as far as, you know, a more cross-compatible rifle product. But we really, really wanted to make that. You know, I think when you look at products like that and all the time and effort put into that, it shows we're not as concerned with, I mean, of course, we want to make money, but we also want to offer incredible product that we're proud of, that we're excited about, that we want, that wasn't available, that we want to share. Definitely. Would you say, so the, uh, the chemo mount that I mentioned, actually, what's the story behind the name on that? Well, it's got... We call that a key mount. So the the way that it slides on and it's got those three keyways, that's just the name that got assigned to it. And then we all started calling it that. And then, you know, that's the name of it, right? Yeah. And then someone said, Kimo, and we laughed, and we said, that's what we're going to call it. <laughs> you know, for key mount, 
But in shortened, it's like, um, like you say, it's like a little chemotherapy. If you've got a problem and I've got enough focused radiation, I can probably help you with that. Uh-huh. You can walk it off. It is the cure, man. Walk it off and take 800 milligrams of ibuprofen. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, whatever you need. Nice. I'll, I'll tell you what I need. What I really need is your flash hider and a 14 by one left-handed thread for my AK, but they're, they're back ordered everywhere. You know, that's the crux of manufacturing. That's <laughs> the, that's a constant problem. I get it. I do the same thing. I'll sometimes sit at my desk and scream, why, why can't we just make these? But with the schedule and we'll, we'll get back to them. Sometimes one thing here or there can get a little, a little bit delayed and pushed back and, you know, all of a sudden it ramped up over here and the machine's making those as many as it can. And, but don't worry, we'll, we'll get those back. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you crap. I, I know exactly how it goes and it's always the most random thing ever. And people are like, Oh, we need this. And yeah, it's, it's totally ridiculous. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hey Mike, to date, what is your favorite or your best design? Best design. I would have to say our mounting system would be the best design that we have. And I would credit that to Todd McGee. Which system was it? I missed it. The, the mounting system, or uh, like you said, the chemo. Yeah. I think that's the one thing that really puts us heads above, generally speaking, unless you want to get product category specific. But I would say overall, that's like one of the coolest things that we do. Yeah, it's awesome. And it, it just works too. I mean, it, it's so worth the money. And honestly, the pyro, because I was a little bit unsure. I was like, I don't usually run flash hiders because I, I really don't care about the flash. And then the pyro, you just pop that thing on. It comes with that 30, 30 cal end cap so I can shoot it on my 308s, uh, my 556, whatever I want. And uh, that really, it turns it into that compensator. Mm-hmm. So I've really got the best of all worlds. I've got my compensator. I've got the flash hider if I want it, and I've got a suppressor if I want it. And that that system, I agree, amazing. I love it. And we also we also offer a uh, flash shield for it as well. You uh, also, you also so offer you can a what? Cap out and put a shield in it and cover up all those holes on it. Oh dang! I didn't even see that. You know, like, and I tell people this: look, if you've got a muzzle brake and you want to calm that effect down and push that noise forward and get rid of that blast. You put the blast shield in and put the pyro on. And if you have a flash hider, but yet you're in need of more muscle break, instead of swapping it, you can just boom, put the pyro on and it allows you to turn your flash hider into a muscle break and vice versa. Mm, nice. So cool. Mike, what do you think about uh, the direction of the suppressor industry right now? Well, I'm super happy with where it's at at the moment coming off the HPA ridiculousness and fear of that. It's politically driven as you well know, but gun industry in its entirety. And so I really enjoy kind of calm political times where they're not talking about bands and people aren't in a uproar, clearing the shelves off of everything. I would guess that the, silencer industry as it sits right now will be kind of left alone and just kind of left to grow and move at its own pace. I don't see anything crazy coming down for panic buys or, you know, no one wants to stop. There's no talk of getting rid of them. So I think we're a good place. How did the idea of the HPA affect the suppressor industry? Yeah did a couple of things that were kind of brutal. A lot of people really thought that the HPA was going to go through and a lot of little companies sprung up and I, I feel for the people that did not make it through that. But could you imagine thinking that you were going to make all these super inexpensive cans and make as many as you could and sell them as fast as you could and then realize that, huh, I don't have any retirement left. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. But it also, it held everybody up on the buy. Everybody was like, look, I want to buy some cans, but I want to wait. I'm going to wait until I can just walk in and buy them. So that kind of stagnated. And I think 
ourselves and everyone else kind of went on life support for a year, six months or whatever during that. Yeah. It was rough. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I know that a lot of our friends that own suppressor companies and stuff definitely behind closed doors talked about things were things were definitely a bit tough. But you're saying now that things seem to have even back out and people are kind of over the the I'm just going to wait until I can go in and buy it at Walmart phase. Yeah, everyone knows the HPA isn't going to pass or go anywhere. And the, I think the best that we can hope for and the thing that I look the most forward to is reduced wait times. Yeah. You know, the, I mean, just imagine if you could get it down to 30, 60, maybe two weeks, that would be, I think that that would be incredible. I think that's all we can legitimately hope for. Yeah, totally. I, I would love that actually, because I think I'm going on nine months for one of them right now. I want it to be like that TSA clear thing. No kidding. Yes. I do a, yeah, background check. Two weeks. I'm good to go. Yep. Right. TSA pre is one of the best things that or, ever happened to me. If we could get to that with NFA transfers, the world would be a much better place. Yeah, I actually did just see someone did a, an e an e file on a form one and got it back in two weeks for an SBR. Which wow. I mean, that's Valhalla. That's that's the the goal of everything in the universe. Agreed. Um, no, that's awesome. Let's talk about pricing for just a little bit. What would you say is your best-selling can? Best-selling can, it bounces around a little bit. But I'll tell you, we have kind of three cans that really, really sell very well for us right now. And the S has always been there. And the S can, you know, get up there into the number one slot and back and forth near the top. The K, surprisingly, the Sandman K has far exceeded any kind of sales numbers that we ever thought that it would do in the K can certainly take that, you know, one, two ish position. And the, the mask is then incredible for us as well. And the mask can post up some great numbers as well. So I'd say it kind of bounces around on those three, unless you've got a new product out, then, you know, there's always kind of a new, they, they, you get a spike in sales when you put anything new out. So yeah, uh, the K but makes right now we probably sell more Nomad, but we'll have to wait for a few months to see. Maybe the Nomad will take over the number one position. It's just I don't know yet. Very nice. The K makes a lot of sense as to why it's uh, so popular. Just honestly, because it only adds like just a little bit under three inches to your overall length. The price is great. Six ninety nine retail. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And all the way up to three hundred. Well, oh, sorry. Uh, no, I, was, I think another thing about the K is it is a much better shooting can than you think it's going to be. When you look at all the other K configured cans, I've had some just. I mean, in the right situation, a K is just outstanding, and I think it performs better than people think. And I think other people, once they start to shoot it, are more excited, and that gets other people more excited, and. It just works well in itself, good. Definitely. So, with the suppressor industry, I, there's so many people out there that like promise that we're going to reduce everything this amount of decibels and that amount of decibels. And one of the things I notice about your website is that I don't see really any of that anywhere. Uh, everyone I know that that has shot the dead air silencers absolutely loves them. But what are your thoughts on kind of this this uh, arms race as far as as it applies to decibel reduction and things like that in the industry? You know, we publish numbers, and we try to publish numbers that are super easy to duplicate, to replicate, to produce again. When the rifles and ammo, the host guns vary a little bit in ammunition, temp humidity, elevation, all that sort of business kind of plays into it. And and I think DD numbers are for a less experienced purchaser. A more experienced purchaser, I think, gets tone, and it's personal as well, but I think tone really plays into it. For me, tone is as important as DB numbers. But look, everybody makes a can with a reasonable DB number, and if you post up super low DB numbers, maybe that's going to appeal to some people, but then you're going to get called out on it once it gets third-party tested. Mm -hmm. 
You know, you want everyone that third party tests to say, dude, it got under what you said it would do. I'm super happy. I think that's the better way to go. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. What are your future plans? Future plans. I would like to, at this point, see myself staying with dead air, maybe through retirement and then try to stay home more. <laughs> I, I, I love it. <laughs> you have any cool? Or do you want you don't want it that long range, huh? No, no, that's good. Yeah, I mean that's you want awesome. Me to shorten that target up a little bit. Sure. What, I mean, of course, always. Yeah. What's what's Dead Air's plans in the next year? Well, we have. I mean, I think obviously you can see that we have a couple of missing products for really truly complete for a complete line. I believe we need something in the entry for, say, 33 cal, like a 338 Lapua can, and something to go to and include the 45 caliber high powered rifles. I think if we got to there, maybe even 50. And I think you could have complete coverage from the large bar down to rim fire and handguns and sub guns included. So we're just going to keep our knows us to the grindstone and continue to develop and bring product to the market is kind of our big plan. Nice. I love it. Where can everyone find uh, all the stuff that Dare is up to online? Well, we have Instagram and Facebook. And of course, you can go to our website. We have a email list that you can get on if you want. We usually push emails out to the people on the email list kind of firsthand you know if you we try to give those people a little bit of a you know heads up on things that we're going to do we try not to hide and we try to be all over everywhere so we should be pretty easy to to follow us someone wants to follow us whatever style they want to do it in all right i love it you can find everything guys at deadairsilencers.com and uh down at the bottom has all the social media and links like that uh mike thank you so much for joining us it's been truly awesome uh, I've been wanting to thank you in person or at least via voice for a while for, for making the products that you guys make. Uh, it, it definitely made a big difference for me and solved a lot of problems. No, I, I, I couldn't be happier that you're happy with that. And thanks for taking the time to have me on. Do you have some time to stick around for the rest Absolutely. of the show? All right, cool. All right, because basically what we do now is it, we embarrass ourselves. Is we embarrass ourselves. We make prank calls to gun gun related stuff, and it's usually pretty awful. Uh, this one isn't that embarrassing. No, I don't know. Yeah, not too bad. But before we get into that, let's talk about our friends over at Matador Arms. So Matador Arms, they're the ones who sponsor the prank call segment. And I was looking on their website, saw the Stinger. Yep, it's a linear compensator. Uh, It's interesting because it has like the core that you, you know, you attach and then it has the shell, which reduces muzzle flash and noise for the shooter and everyone around. I don't, I haven't tried this one actually. I'm uh, kind of curious. Have you tried it? I believe, yeah, I do have this one actually. Oh, have you? What do you think? I, I think they're they're great. Uh, they serve a purpose. I I put these on like stuff that has really short barrels and stuff like that, just to kind of mm-hmm. push all that blast away from me, so my hand doesn't get engulfed in flames like every time I shoot. No. Uh, this would actually be great if I threw this on my Xtar EXP. Mm-hmm. Dang. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I want to do that because that thing shoots have fireballs. Them. Yeah, I know. So yeah, j- definitely check out the Stinger eighty nine ninety nine on their website. But if you use the code GUNFUNNY10, that gets you 10% off. Yes, absolutely. The- guys, it's time for the prank call. It's time for prank calls with Malcolm and Gertrude. Honey! Hey, you're calling out of the police lobby. How can I help you? Yeah, hi, this is Gertrude. Uh, Malcolm's here as well. And uh, my roommate, he needs some training. Uh, I, I personally, I have a lot of experience with guns, but I don't have the patience to train him. So it, I, what, Malcolm? Yeah, well, Go I was ahead. just going to say, it's awful. I'm just trying to shoot and she's telling me, all right, you stupid moron, idiot. Don't do it like that. And I don't know better. <laughs> well, you put everybody's oh, no. life in danger. <laughs> I, I just, uh, you know, I, it didn't come out. So I was lo- just trying to look down and see where it was. 
Yeah, so I told him, rule number one, never look down the barrel of a gun. Yeah, rule number one, never ever have her as your teacher because, God, it's awful. So I was wondering what kind of training, because we need to get him taken care of. I mean, I have guns in the apartment, and I don't really trust him with with them, you know, when he's around. Yeah, and when she gets angry, I don't trust her. <laughs> okay, have you already set it up a count? With no. us? Uh, Malcolm, did you set up an account? I didn't even See, know. He already, he's already, okay, Malcolm, I thought you said that you wanted this person to train you. I want someone to train me that's not you, basically, is what I'm looking for. Okay, so, so. Okay, he, have you gone on to my um, and set up, a, uh, open an account under your name? No, not yet. Okay, you're more than welcome to do that. And then, um, let's see. Does this. Now, does, Okay, so does this account like does it does it do background checks or anything? Because that might be a problem for Malcolm. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, it does a uh, background check. No, that'll be fine. I, okay, $6. okay. Well, thank you. We're gonna call someone else. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> wow. I love how you come out with like a uh, an Australian accent. Well, you know, I I'm not a professional voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, we need to cut it off. Malcolm's coming out of character. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> Mike, as an adult, do you still make prank calls? <laughs> no, I actually don't. Oh. Uh, caller ID kind of put a quash to that as well as puberty. Yeah, yeah, no, that's <laughs> uh, <laughs> we haven't we haven't reached that point. All valid points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I guess that brings us uh, to talking about our next friends. Polymer 80. So as you guys know, they released the uh, the PF940CL, which is the opposite of the Glock 19X. So we got a bunch of those in. We are giving them away. If you want to enter that giveaway, all you have to do is go to gunfunny.com forward slash P80. Put your first name, email, and we'll announce the winner the first week of November. But they also, they gave me a slide and this one is their gray slide, but it like, it looks really cool. It's almost like a, a gunmetal gray. Oh, it totally is. It's baller. I love it. Yeah. So I'm super excited to show that off right now. It's getting stippled, but when I get it back, I'll, uh, I'll post it on social media and I think you guys are going to be a little jelly. Totally agree. Palmer80.com coupon code is gun funny gets you 10% off. Boom. That happened. Now let's talk about some gear. Tactic Talk, discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. All right, so when I was trying to find this website, T-Shots, <laughs> um, I've noticed when you Google T-Shots, uh, it a lot of websites come up for male hormone injection. <laughs> wow. So it was difficult to find this website. All right, that's fair. Uh, Mike, what are your favorite kind of targets to shoot at, actually? You know, I I hate to say this, but I'm kind of a traditional paper and steel guy. Yeah, nice. yeah, steel. I love. I, oh, sorry. I was going to say I have been known to hunt a few rocks down in my day too. Well, you got to watch out for those pesky rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Same. they could be out at a long range, and you could maybe want to put some metal on them. Absolutely, love that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're always looking out for cool stuff to kind of shoot at, and Ava. What are these? Well, essentially, they're like a little disc, and I think it comes in a bit. So in a bag, there's four discs. You get this red latex wrap, which is kind of like a balloon, it's, basically. It's, it's totally like a, a balloon. short balloon without the little mouthpiece. Yeah, the neck. And then you put these over the balloon, and then when you shoot them, obviously, it pops the balloon, so you have like that instant gratification. And I, when I, you know, at first glance, I was like, oh, these are actually pretty cool. But this morning we were messing around with them. We haven't even shot at them yet. But this morning we were messing around with them and we tried to put that red latex wrap over the disc. And uh, I mean, they all kept breaking. Yeah. I, Only one did we manage to get over that disc. And then, of course, my fingers smell like rubber. Yep. There's little there's rubber all over the office right now. <laughs> I mean, this just it's so bad. It, it, it's a disaster. So and I think that these discs, like when you shoot them a couple times, they're not going to hold up that well. No. So it's not going to last. And I mean, the, the idea is cool, right? So you shoot it, the, the bullet pierces the, the latex or the balloon or whatever it is, and then the balloon just disappears and then you've got your target. But I, I feel like there's not as much pay, uh, payoff. There's way too much time invested for very, very little payoff. Yeah, they're reactive, but seriously, like they're not easy to put on. I'm not sure how long they're going to last. With Especially that, for that one person to put on. Yeah. It may be if like I were holding the desk and you were able to, you know, put the latex over it 
And also the cost, I think it's a little high for what it is. Um, I mean, it looks like it's like made in China. I could easily probably get something at the dollar store and make my own, but the pot, the cost is $19.95 and that kit includes four, 4.5 inch plastic discs, 16 red latex wraps, which I think we're already down to like, I don't know, 10 because we've broken like five and then 54 adhesive <laughs> dots. So you can put these little dots on the back and uh, essentially stick them up on your targets. Yeah. They might be good for like airsoft training or something like that. If you're just doing some dry fire stuff with an airsoft pistol or something like that. I don't know. It just seems like uh, there's not enough payoff for me for these. Yeah. Uh, oh, well. Yep. Can't win them all. All right. That that actually uh, does it for for those. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, it is time to actually go over our reviews real quick. All right, so iTunes reviews. This is uh, this is where you guys tell us what you think of the show. You can leave them on either iTunes or Facebook. Either way, uh, we totally love it and appreciate them all. Ava, are you going to read these today? No. Ah, dang it, it's me again. All right, uh, Iowa Shop Teacher says five stars. Thank you very much. This podcast makes me look crazy. I don't know how you come up with such great content every week. I thoroughly enjoy all the segments of the show, but really look forward to the prank calls. I usually look like a fool as I laugh out loud as I listen to it with my headphones on. While I look insane laughing to myself, this podcast keeps me laughing every week and brings levity to stressful days. Thank you so much for all your humor and hard work. I sure appreciate it. I was shop teacher. Aw. Yeah, that's so sweet. Thank you. And also, I'm glad that we're making you look like a buffoon. Yeah. Because uh, we, I mean, yeah, join the club. <laughs> Jeremy Jacobs has five stars best podcast. This is probably one of the best firearms podcasts I've came across. They followed me on Instagram. That's what made me listen to them. And for only being two podcasts in, it's definitely something I'm a B. <laughs> I'm a going to be hooked on. They do a great job and you can't ask for anything better. Can't wait for more podcasts to come out. But have you ever heard of Hooked on Phonics? <laughs> it worked for me. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you very much for the the uh, review. Concrete Cowboy 69, five stars, Chewbacca, Harry Balls. Uh, great podcast. <laughs> Eva sounds hot. Sean, well, if you want a good laugh, just see his bull riding video. <laughs> but I really enjoy the show. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Ava, or actually, let's, let's just have Mike do it. For yeah. now, we're going to have the guest pick. I, I totally agree. Mike, would you uh, pick one of those, your favorite reviews, so we can give them a prize? I'd say Iowa Shop Teacher. Boom. All right, Iowa Shop Teacher, contact us. We got a prize for you. Do we even know what we're giving away? Uh, Sean's pubic oh. hair. Oh, gross. <laughs> uh, what were you going to say, Mike? I say Iowa Shop Teacher sounds very genuine to me. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I actually follow him on Instagram, and oh. he's always working out and stuff, and hashtag I looked. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, go ahead and send us in, and we will get you out of prize. Uh, Ava, it's time to wrap this show up. It sure is. So if you guys want to find us, uh, just go to Gun Funny, and then there's links to all the social media, wherever you can find the podcast. So if you're really not sure where we're located, just go to Gun Funny, and uh, we have all the links for that. If you can't get enough of us, think about becoming a Patreon. Uh, basically, a Patreon, it's a pledge. I mean, you could pledge as little as a dollar a month, and that helps support the show. As a result, we were now able to afford an editor. So if you think we sound better... Well, we're not really getting better. We just have an editor now yeah. who makes us sound better. Nope, we are the exact same awfulness. Kenny Ortega is our editor. He does a great job. Thank you very much, Kenny. And uh, we've got some $25 a month Patreons. What are their names, Ava? Corbin Bonafide. What? Iraq Veteran 8888. No. Yeah. Charger Arms. No. Adam Balzer. Yeah. Ryan Morrison. Yeah, he's the newest in the $25 club. Mm-hmm. Totally appreciate that. And we have a king of the Patreons for the person who, who uh, submits the most every single month. Uh, it is a it's a title that can be taken away from you, but you can also get it back just by being the number one contributor. Two uh, A Jewels is that that person, that company right now, and we'll basically say whatever they want. What did they want us to say? Uh, so right now, the new rose gold pieces are in stock. Uh, they said at the end of October they become in stock, so now is the time. Uh, also, if you're interested in giving away a Two A Jewels as a gift, any jewelry or something, definitely place your order now. Because as time approaches, they're going to sell out pretty quickly. Yeah, definitely do that. So and you can just go around. to their Facebook page. Just uh, search for 2A Jewels. All right. That sounds good. Patreon.com slash GunFunny to become a Patreon. And Mike, it has been awesome hanging out with you. Thank you so much uh, for everything that you do. And uh, we really appreciate you being here. Definitely. I can't thank you enough for asking me to be on. That was incredible. You were actually requested by our Patreons. Yeah. They, uh, they they're wanted, really wanted big fans of you. That I mean, just goes to show they don't really know what they want, do they? Well, 
<laughs> well, they get okay. Money I mean, us, yeah. So. Hello. They like us. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no take back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, deadairsilencers.com. You can find everything that they do there. And uh, Ava? And we're out of here. That's a wrap. Want to send feedback? Suggest a place to prank call? Tell us about a company or anything else? Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact.